So our next speaker is uh, uh, Daisuke Yamakawa, and he's going to speak about uh, meromorphic connections and quivers. Thank you very much. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers to inviting, for inviting me to such a great conference. I'm very happy to talk here. So my talk is about some relationship between meromorphic connections on the Riemann sphere and quivers, namely a directed graphs. So I start with Crowley Bowie's result in the logarithmic case for logarithmic connections, and then go to the non-logarithmic case. So first, the logarithmic case. So let O1, O2, that are OM be conjugacy classes of um, N by N matrices, so GLN, C adjoint orbits, then consider this space. So this space is defined by the space consisting of elements of the product of all orbits with sum equal to zero, divided by the diagonal action of GRN. So this is very basic space. Then taking these things to endpoints, in C, the space parameterizes the isomorphism classes of logarithmic connections on the trivial vector bundle in the Riemann sphere with the residue at each ti lying in oi and no other poles. So note that the condition sum equal to zero is nothing but the holomorphic condition at x equal to infinity. So this means that this connection is holomorphic at infinity, so have no other poles. So this space has a symplectic structure. So if we identify the dual space of the GLN with GLN itself using the trace, then each orbit may be viewed as a quadrant orbit, so it has the Kirillov of course, and Suri symplectic structure. And the map mu uh, sending elements of the product of orbits to the sum is a moment map with respect to the action of the GRN. So therefore, the space in the previous slide is just a complex Hamiltonian reduction by the action of GRN. So, but it may be singular. So, I want to take some open subset. So, consider the open subset consisting of tuples of AIs with no common invariant subspace of CN, except the trivial two subspaces. So, then this open subset is a smooth and so complex symplectic manifold if it is not empty. So it's sometimes called the residue manifold. So Crowley Bobby's result says the residue manifold is isomorphic to a Nakajima quiver variety. So what is the quiver variety? The quiver variety is some complex symplectic manifold, in fact, a hyperkernel manifold associated to a quiver, a directed graph, so it consists of vertices and arrows. And so uh, bold n, n is a tuple of non-negative integers indexed by the vertices, and zeta, which is a tuple of, a tuple of complex numbers indexed by the vertices. So to define it, consider for each arrow two vector spaces of dimension given by n. So here, s, on, s of a is the source of the arrow a, and t of a is the target. So we have two vector spaces. 
and then consider the linear maps in both directions. The space of such tuples has a symplectic structure with canonical coordinates given by x and y. And uh, this space is acted on by the group, the product of g l and i by base change. This action is Hamiltonian with moment map given by this guy, the left hand side of this relation. So this is the Hamiltonian reduction. But also in this case, it may be singular. So I have to take some open subset. So, so sometimes called the irreducibility condition. So, so such, tuple, such a tuple is called irreducible, irreducible if uh, it has no non-trivial collection of subspaces invariant y, x, and y, all x and y. So such a reducible ones form the open subset which is smooth, complex, symplectic manifold. And let me call it the quiver variety. So in the crawl of this theorem, the quiver is like this. So the star shaped quiver. So here the number of legs is just the number of pods. So in this case, the number of legs is m. And the length is given by the degree of the minimal polynomial of elements of orbit. So, uh, so precisely di minus one, so degree minus one. So roughly speaking, the complex parameter zeta depends on the eigenvalues, and uh, the board end depends on the multiplicities of the eigenvalues. So using this result, Crowley Bove solved the additive during Simpson problem. So this is so in other words, he gave a criterion for the emptiness of the residue manifolds. So because Kurobi Bobe already had a criterion, the criterion for the emptiness of the quiver variety, so, so using this result, he immediately gets such a result. And also, so, his result has another application. So it is well known that each loop-free vertex of the quiver defines a reflection. So the definition is like this. And this, if, if Q has, the quiver Q has uh, no edge loop, then such reflections generate the wild group of some symmetric cut moody algebra. So now, so it, it is very well known, isomorphism between two quiver varieties with different parameters relating, related by the reflection. So this is called the reflection functor. So through Claude Bowie's isomorphism, so such reflection at the central vertex of the star-shaped quiver relates to the additive analog of Katz's middle convolution in the sense of Dittweiler and Reiter. So the middle convolution is a certain integral transformation. So, and uh, the other reflections come from scalar shifts of residues. So they are trivial, trivial transformations. So they induce transformations of Schrodinger equations, the isomorphic equations for non-resonant logarithmic connections. So these reflections give, roughly speaking, the wide group symmetry of Schrodinger equations. But note that this cuts middle convolution uh, changes the rank of the connections. So so they, they may change the 
matrix size of Schrodinger regulations. equations. Okay, so let's go to the non-logarithmic case. So as a generalization of conjugation classes of matrix, consider orbits of the action of GLN over the formal power series ring on the space consisting of uh, local one forms having no chromatic part defined by G dot A equal to the principal part of G A G inverse. So G A G inverse uh, is lives, lives in such a space. So let us take the principal part. Then it lives in this space, and it gives gives an action. So this action preserves the order. Okay, order as a formal Lorentz series. And uh, if the order of G minus the identity plus the order of A is at least zero, then G stabilizes A. So because G A G inverse is in this case has trivial principal part. So every orbit is finite dimensional. And uh, in fact, maybe build as a quadrant orbit of, the, of this quotient group for sufficiently large k via such a dual pairing. And also, every orbit of order at least minus one may be identified with just a conjugation class of matrices. So this gives a generalization of adjoint orbits to higher order four case. So using such orbits, let us define the polar part manifolds following Bosch. So let O1, O2, that OM be such orbits. Then consider the space consisting of elements of the product of all orbits with the sum of the residues equal to zero divided by the action of GRN. So then taking distinct endpoints in C, we may view the space uh, as the moduli space of meromorphic connections on the trivial vector bundle or on the Riemann sphere with poles at T1 and the Tm and nowhere else, such that the principal part of the connection form at x equal ti lives in oi, where we identify the indeterminate z with x minus ti. Of course, the space may be singular. So let us take the open subset consisting of tuples of AIs with no non-zero subspace satisfying this invariance condition. Then this open subset is a smooth, complex, symplectic manifold if it is non-empty. So for polar path manifolds, Bosch conjectured the following. So let us assume the following two conditions. First, the orbit O1 contains such a diag block diagonal matrix. So in each diagonal block, so we have the residue free part and the residue part. So the condition is that the residue free part is given by scalar polynomial in the inverse. So in some sense, this condition is not so strong. So but the second condition, second assumption is very strong. So the other orbits are logarithmic. 
So just adjoint orbits of GLN. Now the following is Bochy's conjecture proved by Hiroe and myself. So in this case, also in this case, the polar path manifold is isomorphic to a quiver variety. Next, let me explain what kind of quivers appear in Bochy's conjecture. So the underlying graph of the quiver appearing in theorem is constructed as follows. So first, define a finite graph gamma zero by the vertices being the set of scalar polynomials appearing in diagonal blocks and uh, joining each pair of distinct vertices by degree of the difference minus one edges. So next, extend this graph by adding m minus one vertices. And uh, so le let, us, let us label these vertices by two, three, that are m, so corresponding to uh, logarithmic poles. And uh, join each new vertex and all the vertex by exactly one edge. Finally, glue a leg, namely a graph of type A, to each vertex. So the length, the length is given by this condition. So, for, so this figure is an example here. Gamma zero is just a triangle. So, so if the gamma zero has three vertices and uh, each difference has degree two, then gamma zero is given by a triangle. And uh, in this example, we set m equal to one. So, 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 so this step is trivial. And uh, this gives, this gives the three legs. So gluing these legs, we get this quiver. Sorry, this graph. So this is Bochy's conjecture. So next, the reflection, about the reflections. So in this situation, it is hard to check the, the reflection functors of quiver varieties in these transformations of isomodal mutations. So, so using an irregular singular analog of the additive middle convolution, instead, Hiroe constructed such a nice morphism. So the change of parameters is the same as the reflection factors, but uh, construct such an isomorphism using the middle convolution instead of reflection factors. So then we can show that under some mild assumption, so such isomorphism induced transformation of isomorphic communication. So, so this is a generalization of Bochy's result. So he, he, get, he got the result in the case, the order of O1 is at least minus three. So for example, when n equal to two, so rank two case, and uh, the dimension of the polar path manifold equal to two, we get the panel variations. So in our case, the four panel variations appear. And in each case, we recover, we can recover Okamoto's wild group symmetry of the panel variation, except the action of the lattice part. The action of the lattice part is given by the Schrodinger transformation and so 
we cannot construct a Schrodinger transformation using the Cup's middle conversion. But anyway, finite, finite wild group part can be recovered. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. So in yes. the case of uh, connections, of polar connections, the quiver that you showed as a loop, so do you consider the quiver variety with superpotential or do you set the superpotential to zero? Sorry? The quiver uh, yes. has, a, has a closed loop, uh, oriented loop, I believe, right? A loop, a triangle case? Yes. Okay. So do you, do you consider allowing for a, a superpotential or relations uh, associated to this loop or does the correspondence work with zero, uh, zero relation? No, so, so the query variety would depend on such a choice. Sorry, I can I can answer now. So 